Imagine a moment where you are the leading star of a basketball team. It is the last 20 seconds of the game, and your team is down by two points. You play amazing defense and steal the ball. You go for a fast break, and it's only you there going for a layup. The ball circles around the rim and goes out. Devastating, right? But there's still time to fix it. I'll need it back. Well, what if I told you that after you missed that shot, the first action is not a physical one, it's a mental one, and it all depends on what you say to yourself once you see the ball is out. Our ability to recover from a bad moment and how fast we do it is much dependent on the way we speak to ourselves. In the most challenging moments in life, Positive self-talk and strong mantras can help you become your own inspiration. I once was that basketball player. If you opened up my chest when I was in high school, you wouldn't find the normal heart. Mine was round and orange, and it was bouncing up and down my chest. But when I was 24 years old, I woke up one morning, and two hours later, I was completely paralyzed from the chest down, almost 70% of my body. In the hospital, the doctor discovered I suffered a rare condition called spinal stroke. In the first few weeks, I was lying in bed, and there is only one thing I could think of. My life is over. Who am I? if I can't be that tall, strong, fast, and determined basketball player. But this is not a sad story, and not an heroic one either. It's the story of each and every one of us when we are facing challenging moments in life. You might think my story is inspiring, but please don't give me that credit just because I'm in a wheelchair. The real inspirational story is how I get my children to bed by 8 p.m. Now, that's inspiring, right? I went through a journey that I call today a journey of small victories. A small victory is a moment in time where all you wanted to do is give up, but you didn't. And the long journey of rehabilitation was full with those small victories of believing that I own my own strength and finding the right words to navigate through the pain of what I lost towards the things I can still be. Believe me that this tunnel was so dark that I had no vision of that famous light. But I kept on going in the dark, convincing myself that I hold the flashlight and that the journey is as important as the end point. We all have moments where we feel powerless. When we go to bed at night and there is only one wish in our heart, please make it go away in the morning. We might be able to wish away headaches, but not wheelchairs. And there are times we all have a metaphorical wheelchair by our bed when we wake up in the morning. Time out. I know I just sounded like a really, really, really long cliché, but let me tell you something about clichés. When a cliché becomes the way you act, it stops being a cliché, and it starts being a way of life. So let's go back to that final layup you all missed a few minutes ago, and to that split second you were watching the ball go out. What goes through your brain right now? Is it, let's go, I can do it, or what a loser, this game is over. The same can happen after a bad business meeting when there was a lot of money on the table, but you didn't get the deal done. In 15 minutes, you need to show up for another meeting. So do you show up thinking about what you just lost or with the motivation to win the game? It's a choice and it's up to you. So how do you go from wanting to give up, from feeling sorry for yourself, from believing life is over, and believe me, I was sure mine was, to actually achieving 
a small victory? How can we end this internal negative loop? Telling myself life is over left me with no hope and no reason to get out of bed in the morning. But I couldn't stop thinking about that basketball player inside me, never giving up, no matter what. So I started repeating in my head. Life as I knew it might be over, but I'm still here. I mean, life isn't over. And there you go. Hope has revealed itself. Self-talk is a muscle that we can train. I was lucky. I had 15, 15 years to train it. And the first step is listening to that voice in your head. If I placed a microphone and we could all hear what's going on between your ears, what will we learn about you? Try to write it down, make it list. Is it a negative list? I'm not good enough, smart enough, I'm never going to make it. Then ask yourself, is it all true about me? Probably not. Will you ever talk like that to a child, to the child you once were? Probably not. And that child, that child is still there. Second step is to find your own mantra. Some people need just one word to become their on-off switch. Some use a line from their favorite song or a movie. Try to understand what works best for you. And the third step is to practice it and repeat it. I mean repeat it and repeat it. Life isn't over. You can uh, even write a note, put it on the refrigerator door or in the toilet. Depends where you spend more time, right? <laughs> My ability to quickly switch that negative loop made me accomplish dreams I didn't dare to dream from the hospital bed. It took me three years to go back to sport. Meantime, I graduated as a physiotherapist and started a master in child development. I started playing wheelchair basketball, knowing it's going to put my heart in the right place. I took up para rowing in 2010, and I've been on the podium more than I can count, including the world title in 2015 and a bronze medal in the Paralympic Games in Rio. I got married. I got married to an amazing woman, and together we raised three beautiful children. I carried the second one and spent 55 hours in labor. 55 hours! <laughs> but again, what kept me going was one strong mantra. Something amazing is going to happen in this room. And believe me, <laughs> she is amazing. They all are. <clears throat> the last story I want to share with you takes me back 18 months ago. It's the summer of 2021. The world is still facing COVID-19. But the Olympics and Paralympic Games are going to happen. During quarantine, I find myself training in the basement of my apartment building on a very abusive rowing machine while trying to run a homeschooling program for the children. I had to find the motivation deep inside to keep on the hard work. So I had to find the right mantra. And on those long hours in that hot and humid basement, I started repeating in my head, I'm strong, I'm fast, and I'm determined. I couldn't believe it when the airplane landed and I was on my way to the Paralympic Village in Tokyo. I was ready to give it all. But as in all good stories, you need to have some drama. So after my first and very good race, the race that qualified me to the final, my result was canceled because one element of the chair that I'm using in the boat did not comply with the regulations. I was mad and disappointed because I've been using that chair for 18 months 
with no complaints, and now I'll have to change it? Just imagine, I'll tell you to run half a marathon in someone else's shoes. It's impossible. But I looked in the, in the eyes of both of my coaches, and I told them, listen up. I'm strong, I'm fast, and I'm determined, so let's go and do what we came here to do. That mantra was planted so deep in my brain that it was like an imaginary protective shield that saved me from falling into the loop of negative self-talk. Every time a doubtful thought wanted to enter, it was immediately blocked. The next morning, I won the semi-final. Rowing was hard. <laughs> Rowing was hard and painful, and I had to use painkillers just in order to get in the boat again for the final. I was fighting for a medal in the worst weather condition and a very inefficient setting of the boat, of the chair in my boat. My back was aching and my body exhausted, but I knew in that moment that I'm strong and I'm fast and I'm determined, and I crossed the finish line second, winning the silver medal. My life philosophy is that if you look at an obstacle as an obstacle, it will knock you down. But if you look at an obstacle as a challenge, you will do your best to overcome. Our ability to recover from a bad moment and how fast we do it is much dependent on the way we speak to ourselves. In school, in business, in everyday life. Choose your mantra. Practice this self-talk muscle. It's going to come handy exactly when you need it. Thank you.